Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Wednesday to you. Happy almost made it to the end of the week. You have made it <laughs> halfway there. Wisdom Wednesday, winning Wednesday, work it out Wednesday. <laughs> good morning. Hey, Harpy Jada. Good morning, good morning. How are you today? Good morning, good morning, good morning to everyone. What's up, Heartbeat Nicole? How are you? Hey, Heartbeat Denise, Heartbeat Eva. Good morning. Thank you, Heartbeat Nicole. Hey, Heartbeat Belinda. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to the Gathering of Hearts. I am Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness, aka the Heart Gatherer. And this morning, we are continuing on in It's Worth the Wait, Part 3. Hey, Heartbeat Juanita, Heartbeat Elaine. Heartbeat Donald, Heartbeat Bernice, good morning. Heartbeat Carolyn, again, we're in It's Worth the Wait, Part 3. And so the last couple of days, we've been talking about learning how to be patient. You know, as just people, you know, we want things when we want them. And we want to be able to microwave everything like we microwave food. We want it to be ready. We want to set the time, two minutes, and here it go, ding, and then be ready to do all that we want to do. But how many of us know that's not the real world? And so while we're working on patience, one of the fruit of the spirit, God is always developing us and he's causing us to grow and he's teaching us more about us and also uh, teaching us to be more like him. And so we've got to switch our brain and learn that um, we no longer need to be impatient. You know, the world teaches us to be in a rush for everything, but that's not how God would have things. So we've got to know that every good thing takes time and that, you know, patience is a virtue. And in essence, good things come to those who wait. And so when we learn to wait, when we learn to rest in God, when we learn to trust in God, and that's good right there, Holy Spirit, because when we learn to um, trust in God, Patience is easy because I'm trusting in God. There's no rush. You know what I mean? And so when my relationship develops with God, there's not a timetable for me because I know that he is the author and finisher of my faith. So when he says that it's the designated moment, when he says that it's the appointed time, that's when it will happen. And so when I learn to switch my brain and to operate and get on the same rhythm as God, there's no longer impatience in in my life because I'm fully trusting God that in time he will reveal all things to me and in time he will manifest all things to me. So let's switch our brain and no longer be impatient, no longer operating with the world, but knowing that I have an author, that he has, he's the finisher of my faith. And so when I learn and allow him to continue to hold the pen, when I learn to put the pen down and stop trying to be the author and finisher of my own faith, Faith. See, then I can enjoy this life, the abundant life that God came for because I'm allowing him to do what he was created to do. He's God. Let him be God. And so here's some, let's look at Romans 8, 25, free Bible version. And it says this, it says, since we're hoping for what we haven't yet seen, we wait for it patiently. We wait for it patiently. So faith is patient because Faith believes. I'm going to say that again. Faith is patient because faith believes. So we're no longer at the point where we're saying, well, what if this, what if this, what if that? No, faith says, even if, even if I have to wait three years, I know God's got me. Even if it's not happening the way that I want it to happen, I know that God's got me. So I'm now operating in faith and not in worldly or not in my own. You know, we say, well, what if it doesn't work? What if it, that's how we talk, but that's not the, the language of heaven. That's not the language of faith. Again, faith says, even if, even if it takes longer than I want it to take, God's got 
me. And so this is what happens when I switch my brain. I trust him like I'm supposed to. I take my hands off of the situation. I put the pen down and I stop trying to write the script and I allow God to write this script that he's already written. I so not write the script. So I live out the script that God has already written. Hey there, Heartbeat Raven. Never seen you before. Welcome to the gathering of hearts. Hey, Heartbeat Nation, give Raven some love in the chat. So now let's look at um, how to be patient. Number one, I think about God's mercy and patience when he deals with our sins. So if he isn't like that towards me, why would I be? You're welcome, Heartbeat Raven. Why would I be like that towards myself? God is always extending mercy. God is always extending patience to us. You know, Travis Green um, has this song, he waited. He waited for me. And I'm so glad that he waited for me. You know, like that he had the patience to not just turn away from me when I didn't get everything right, but he continued to call my name. See, when I think about the patience that God has with me, that I still don't have everything right, that I still, you know, miss the mark sometimes, when I think about the patience that God, he waited for me, or he continues to wait on me, because I'm not like that perfect thing just yet, but he's still working on me, he's patient, he has not taken his hand off of me, so when I I think about how patient God is with me. Now I'm able to not only be patient with others, but I'm able to be patient with the manifestation of what God is doing. He's perfecting me in this thing. See, you've got to look at it differently. No longer being impatient, but waiting on God, knowing that what it is that he's doing, that it's worth the wait. Again, number one, think about God's mercy and patience when he deals with our sins. He gives us time after time. You know, Hezekiah Walker had a song called Second Chance. I'm like, God gives you a third chance, a fourth chance, a fifth chance. The chances that God gives us, it's innumerable. And so when we understand the patience that God gives us, Come on now, we've got to be able to be patient with ourselves and patient with the life that God has pre-orchestrated for us. Amen. Number two, how to be patient. Ask the Holy Spirit for the power to be patient. You know, when I was little, I used to hear people say, oh my God, you never want to ask God for patience because you're going to have test after test and, and trial after trial. But see, that doesn't make any sense to me now that I'm older. Because God says this, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask. And so if I don't have wisdom in being patient, then I need some help. I need to go to my father, the one who says that patience, you know, is, is part of uh, the fruit of the spirit. So I have it. We hey there, Harvey Nation. I have no idea what just happened here, but it just ended. But we're going to jump right back in it. And so... Um, asking the Holy Spirit for patience because patience is, is one of the fruit of the spirit that we have. So it's, it's on the inside of us. It is within us. And so we want to be able to ask God about it. Amen. Again, thank you guys for coming back. I don't know what just happened. It just, I just saw something that popped up that said broadcast ended, but listen, we going to get this word out. Amen. And so we were on number two, ask the Holy Spirit for the power to be patient. And so we've been taught, you know, never ask for patience. At least I was when I was younger, because you're going to get all types of trials and tribulations. But know this, God said this, he said, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask. And so we want to be able to ask for what it is that we need. And so if impatience is something that I'm dealing with, I want to be able to ask God, help me with this thing. Help me get through this thing, you know, because this is something that's already on, on the inside of us. God has already given it to us. You know that the fruit of the spirit are listed in Galatians 5 22. So it's in there. It's in there. It's in there. So now we want to ask the Holy Spirit, help me with this. Help me to be patient. Help me to be, learn how to wait because when I wait, good things come from that. Amen. Number three, 
Learn to wait and see the fruit of your wait. Learn to wait and see the fruit of your wait. And so remember um, in, in um, Genesis, uh, God had told Sarah and Abraham that they were going to have a kid. Remember, they laughed about it like this thing can't happen. You know, uh, Sarah was like, this is crazy. He He's old and he can't do nothing. And Abraham, he was like, she old too. Her wound ain't working. But God had already spoken spoken and said that it was going to be, it was going to happen. But what happened? They got involved and here comes Haggai and here comes Ishmael, but that wasn't it. But when, if, but listen, whenever God tells us something, it's going to work. Isaac still came, but Isaac came in God's timing. And so we've got to learn how to be patient with God because once God has spoken something, it's going to happen. Whenever God gives you a promise, it's going to happen. And so you've got to learn how to wait and understand this, that it's worth the wait. Whatever God has promised you, it's worth the wait. And so we're going to stop right there on today. I'm going to see if I can piece these two things together. We're going to see how this works to try to put both of these videos together. If it's saved, we'll see what happens. But know this, that's your daily dosage for today. It's worth the wait part three. If you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel already, please do so because there you can find all of your dosages in one place. Follow me on social media platforms. God wants me whole. Visit the website. God wants me whole.org. You know how we do this thing. Let's say it together. Say, God wants me whole and I am getting whole by the minute. Again, I'm Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness, aka the heart gatherer. I love you guys a bunch. Go out there and have a spec while amazing day. Look out for falling blessings because they are falling all around you. I'll see you guys right back here tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m. as we continue on in. It's worth the wait. I'll see you guys in the morning.